what time is it? It's Scrawler Box time, and today I'm going to be drinking some coffee while working on this video, so I'm excited. Let's see what's in this month's Scrawler Box. Or I guess last month's box because it's now March. All right, let's get our supplies out. Whoa, classic throwback. And our candy. And our paper and print. Judging by the print, it looks like we're going to be working with watercolor. And here we have our artist. And right away I noticed the paper is long and thin. So that's going to be really interesting. Kind of can't wait to see what, what we do there. But first we have our candy. Now wham. All right, so wow, look how colorful these supplies are. There's just so much going on. Still love how Scrawler Box changes their logo depending on the box, that is so cool. And a bonus sticker, a little feather. All right, let's start going down our list of supplies here. First things first, we have these Karen Brush Marker Pro. We have a blender, a gold, a lush green, and a lilac. So that's really interesting. You can see the ink inside the barrel. Wow, that's really cool. You can see the, the air bubble, so you know it's going to be very thin. Okay, calligraphy, graphic design, illustration. So we aren't going to be working with watercolor, we're going to be working with ink. So I'm excited, I don't really use ink ever. I do want to try inks, but I just, I haven't. Let's see if we can get a yellow to green gradient with that blender brush. So I'm just gonna put some color down and we're going to use this blender if it's even used for blending. Everyone tells me marker blenders aren't actually used for blending, so I'm not sure if this is the, sa oh, if this is the same or not. Oh gosh, I'm tearing up the paper, now I'm scared. Um, I'm not sure what I was doing there. Trial and error, huh? So I was reading the instructions on our sheet thing, and it says you can actually dip the tip of the pin in water and then use that to have like a, a variety of tones or intensities of ink. So that's interesting. I'm a little worried about the paper. I don't think it can handle. I'm actually going to see what it's like if I use a brush after dipping it in water to spread the ink around. Oh, I like that a lot more than dipping, <laughs> dipping the brush of the pen in. So that'll be really fun and interesting. It kind of reminds me of watercolor pencils where you put the color down first and then you go through with your brush and do stuff with it. So it looks like it reactivates pretty well. All right, um, okay, let's move on to the next supply. Okay, next up we have something I'm going to butcher. We have the Karen Ache Fibralo Fiber Pins. I am so sorry. In yellow and blue. Apparently these also activate with water, so we have lots of watery ink stuff. I like that blue. These are some very bright colors in this box. And a yellow. Feels like a standard marker. Let's see what happens when I use a brush with water on it. Here we go. Yep, just kind of reactivates the same way the other markers did. That blue is so bright, I actually love that. All right, next up we have the Spectrum Noir Aqua Tint, and I believe we've had one of these brushes before in Scrawler Box. Oh, ooh, ooh, looks like pee. Okay, so we have a nice little gold color coming out of this aqua brush. Fun, let's flip this over. Next up we have the Artaline Drawing System Pen. Drawing System Pen, point two. Acid-free, pigment ink, water-based, water-resistant. Look at that, it's a pen. Let's see how it goes on top of these. Oh, perfect. But I have to wonder how long it takes it to dry until we can put this over it. Oh, wow, okay. Well, it looks like it's already ready to go, so cool. Uh oh, next up is the Karen Diace Edelweiss pencil. Oh, the, the lead is very hard. Hard. And we can't forget our Helix pencil cap eraser. Throw me back to elementary school. I haven't used these in a while. Let's see. Ooh, works well. 
Oh, and as far as the paper goes, it is a botanical ultra smooth 300 GSM. Okay, so now that we have tried all of our supplies, let's see what our challenge is. We have plumage. Plumage? Let's get creating. So I did look up the word plumage and it actually has to do with birds, like their feathers, like all of their feathers together. Like, um, I don't know, maybe it's like another word for fluffiness. Like a dog has a lot of fur, a lot of fluff. So birds have a lot of plumage. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, so that makes sense with all of the feathers and stuff in this scroller box. So I actually do have an idea already. I really do like to draw birds in my simple style. I think it's really silly. And though the one concern I do have about my style and the way I draw birds is that you can't really tell that they have feathers because I don't put a lot of I guess detail into the way I draw things. Uh, you don't have like a lot of that texture of feathers, but I do have an idea uh, of what to draw. So I'm kind of excited. Um, so as you can see, I'm drawing a bird. This is the way I draw feathers. Two lines on the wing. Look how, look how plumagey, plumagey <laughs> that bird is. So we have a bird flying and I have a line here and that line is going to represent change, change in these birds. So I thought it would be interesting to draw these birds uh, losing their feathers. So they're going to transition from being birds and having feathers, and then they're going to turn into skeletons or something. So that's about what I'm going for here. I'm just going to draw a bunch of birds and I want it to be all colorful because there's so many bright and crazy colors in this scroller box. So I definitely want to get in on that. And I was also thinking how interesting it is that this scroller box is one of the few scroller boxes that give you a pencil, an eraser, and a lining pen. So we have everything that I would normally work with, which is kind of interesting. Usually I have to break out an eraser, but we already have an eraser. This bird is very... This bird does not have a body. Maybe I should give this bird a body. Um, so this is where the skeleton would start and maybe the feathers would be textured like that. Not to toot my own horn, but I think it's a very interesting concept here. You know what I didn't do and I probably should have done? I did not look up a bird skeleton. Would that have been smart? Oh, super. It would have been a super smart but I didn't do it. Sometimes it's fun just to kind of make up, especially the way I draw birds is so goofy that even if I did look up a bird skeleton, let's be honest, it would not look like a bird skeleton. It would just look really silly anyways. Uh, I kind of want to give this bird feet because why not? And if you are unfamiliar with the way I draw birds, I draw birds super silly, super silly and weird. Oh no, hold up. I actually think I'm going to look up a bird skeleton. I think their skeleton wing bits are not like that. Why am I giving birds fingers? That, that doesn't make any sense. Yes, birds have pointy wings. What am I doing? I'm, I'm seeing a lot of Halloween decorations, which is freaking me out because you know how <laughs> Halloween decorations give uh, spiders skeletons. So I think these Halloween decorations are giving birds way more finger bones than they need. Okay, so yeah, definitely bird skeletons um, huh, don't look like that. Okay, so let's get to aligning this sucker, sucker puppy. Hmm. All right, so we have our first skeleton bird, which looks very strange, but that's okay. Let's draw a feather here. The feathers just look like little knives. It's kind of silly, but also kind of cute. I like it. Is this a big bird or is it just really close to the viewer? Who knows? All right, I think that is good for feathers. Let's erase all these pencil lines and then get to coloring. All right, let's get to coloring. I wanna color this bad boy. I'm going to do some purple and a blue gradient. I don't know if I can mix these two different markers, but I don't see why not. Cut to everything going wrong. All right, I'm actually going to dip the marker into the water because I don't, look how cool that looks, you see that? 
sweet little rings. I am wasting the ink, but it looks so cool. I don't think I worked fast enough for that, but we'll see. Okay, let's try to... Actually, maybe I'll get a smaller brush. Okay, let's try to blend, blend these colors. Here we go. Ooh, I'm not getting... I'm not... <laughs> I'm not having luck doing a really nice smooth gradient, but I do think with the texture I can get with my brush, it'll be really nice. I love that purple blue color. Well, ooh, okay, you know what? I'll have to go back with marker and try to just hide how rough that is with some marker texture. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. I'm afraid to touch the paper too much because it was really falling apart earlier and it is also now. No, no, no. Um, yeah, I'm kind of scared to work the paper too much. Doesn't seem to be able to handle it too well. Oh gosh, I have so much trouble controlling these types of brushes. Hopefully I can um, remember to use all of the art supplies and don't leave anything out this time. What if I touch it? Oh, look at that green. I love that. But now I've got blue on the tip of my yellow. Oh no. That was a bad move, I'm sorry. Rookie mistake, rookie mistake. Okay, let's add some water in there and get some lovely gradient going. I love the green that this blue and yellow make. It's so pretty. Gosh, I, I am in love with this blue to green to yellow. It's amazing. I wonder, let's do a purple to yellow. Honestly, don't really care for this color. I really like this color. So I'm gonna take my swatch sheet here, get a wet brush and pick up some of this color. Oh no, wait, the beak is still wet. Oh no. Okay, no, we'll, we'll do this guy over here. Um, so this way I can create a much lighter purple color. Ha, huh, look at that, I did it. Ooh, it's, I mean, it's kind of muddy, but I honestly kind of like that color. I mean, what can I say? I really like earthy colors. Again, I'm going to use water to lighten the color. I just think the colors look a lot better when they're watered down. I really like that look. I think those bright colors are a little much for me. Oh my gosh, I really like this right here. This is nice. It's like that one, but a lot less intense. Maybe I should add some shadow to the skulls. And for our final touch, I'm going to probably regretfully color the sky blue just to help that transition from really colorful to no color. And we'll see how that goes. I colored in some blue on a piece of paper and added some water so that I can get a lighter blue color. And yeah, I'm just gonna paint to the sky. Oh no, so something I'm noticing about this medium, which is pretty unfortunate, is that I did not paint on top of this bird right here, but you can see that just because I painted right up against something that was already inked, it is activating and kind of soaking that into the bird, unfortunately. So that's not gonna be good. <laughs> but we will see what happens with the rest. Maybe it's something to do with that particular blue and yellow because this feather is also doing it, but I don't think any of the purples are doing it, which is good. Oh no, oh no, we have a water breach. No! The purple activated. Oh, these things are so easily activated. It's scary. Maybe I should have went for a more abstract painting, huh? I think that is it. I really always like when white things are in a colored background. So this little bird right here, he's white and he is popping off of that blue background. And I absolutely love that. So that is it. We have our really colorful birds going into this white skeletal area. Don't know what this is. What does it represent? Who knows? It was really fun trying this new medium and yeah, I had a lot of fun. Interesting outcome. 
I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much to Scrawlerbox for giving me this box. If you want to get your own Scrawlerbox, check out a link in the description. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.